A lot of people will say that if you eat steak, you're going to drive mTOR, which is the mechanistic target of rapamycin involved in cancer formation and proliferative pathways, and that will eventually cause cancer. So there's a lot of people that say animal products drive this pro-growth signaling process in your body and therefore cause cancer, so you should not consume animal products. In this video, we're going to talk more about mTOR, what mTOR is, the various nutrients and regulators involved in mTOR secretion and inhibition, and really, we're going to talk about a new paper by someone who knows more about mTOR than pretty much anyone on the world, David Sabatini. He just published this paper, and we're going to talk about how mTOR to be stimulated needs both growth factors and nutrients, not just nutrients. So not just glucose, but we need insulin and IGF-1 and glucose and amino acids at the same time. Today's show is brought to you by GetKeto.com, one of the easiest sensors to use to test whether you're burning fat or burning sugar. So as you know by now, you can test your breath acetone levels and that will be a good indicator about your body's metabolic state and if you're burning fat or in burning ketones. I found this, no kidding, to be one of the simplest and easy to use. Here's how you use it. All you have to do is press this button right here. When the system lights up, you pair it with your iPhone, you breathe into it and it will test you the parts per million breath acetone levels, which again are a great indicator to ascertain whether or not you're burning fat and utilizing ketones and making ketones. So you can go to Get Keto and use the promo code HRH to save 20% off this amazing travel friendly, super small, like it fits in your pocket, in your bag. It has a great app so you can pair it with your iPhone to test your ketone levels so you don't have to constantly prick your finger and get bloody and deal with band-aids and uh, alcohol wipes and all that sort of thing. A lot of people talk about protein and say, if you consume protein, protein contains amino acids, that's gonna fuel the growth of cancer. And we know that chronic overexpression, and I wanna underscore chronic overexpression of mTOR is linked with and involved in the you know synthesis or creation of obesity, type two diabetes, heart disease, cancer, autoimmunity, and much more, even epilepsy. If we chronically overexpose nutrients and growth factors, we can develop these age-related chronic diseases. But for many people, many of you, you're eating animal products like myself, but you're not mainlining them. You're not putting an IV of steak into your body. You're having one or two meals a day, and you're fasting for an extended part of the day. We know that fasting reduces glucose, reduces insulin, reduces IGF-1, all that. Yeah, in the post-meal window, you have high levels of growth factors and nutrients, so mTOR is being stimulated, but it's not being chronically overexpressed. And that's what I want to indelibly ink into your mind. I'm going to say it again. Chronic overexpression of mTOR is involved in creating these diseases. Mild fluctuations and ebbs and flows in mTOR is natural. We don't necessarily want mTOR to be driven to the ground. We know that when people take the drug rapamycin to help with tumor transplantation, you know, acceptance by the body, we know that they lose muscle mass. We know that too much mTOR inhibition is involved in too much suppression of the immune system because we need some ebb and flow, okay? So if you're gonna eat a ketogenic diet, a paleo diet, or a carnivorous diet, a whatever diet, you don't wanna be consuming food every two to three hours because what that's going to do or could potentially do is provide the recipe for overexpression of mTOR. Now, if you're a bodybuilder, if you're a professional athlete, and you're compromising long-term health for short-term performance, maybe you need to do that right now. But later in life, you may want to prioritize fasting, intermittent feeding, uh, and time-restricted feeding, stuff like that. The key thing that I wanna underscore, the key finding uh, in this paper, was the notion that we need both nutrients and growth factors to stimulate this mTOR complex which is, as you can see in this diagram, and I'll, I'll throw, we'll throw it up on, on this side of the screen right here, um, the mTOR C1 complex is intimately involved with the lysosome, which is important because the lysosome is one of the key mechanistic kind of functionalities of autophagy. We know that autophagy is this critical process that's involved in cleaning extracellular, or sorry, intracellular garbage and aggregated proteins, dysfunctional organelles like mitochondria, uh, accumulated iron, even pathogens and viruses and things like that. So autophagy is very important. We know that uh, mTOR C1 can inhibit the autophagy initiation factors and so forth, Beclin-1 and these other proteins. And so we know that there's this kind of yin and yang approach going on with mTOR and autophagy. Uh, but the long and short of the story is the autophagosome, which is this bag of garbage that the autophagy process collects and degrades, fuses with the lysosome, which is where 
mTOR is complexed with. And it kind of makes sense that the mTOR would be, mTOR complex, mTOR C1 complex specifically, would be intimately involved with the lysosome because the lysosome is where degraded uh, proteins are you know, resynthesized or broken down into to their constituent amino acids, which can be utilized and mTOR is constantly sensing that. So here's kind of a funny thing to think about is I just came off a 40, uh, 39 hour fast, right? I stimulated mTOR, albeit very uh, low levels, probably during my fast as I was breaking down aggregated proteins, hopefully in my brain and you know pathogenic proteins, things like that. Uh, because when autophagy is upregulated, you're going to be releasing amino acids that could stimulate mTOR. Now, this wasn't a chronic mTOR overexpression, but the point that we need to consider is even when we're fasting, the amino acids and proteins that we're degrading from being in a fasted state is causing expression of mTOR because there's going to be a, a, a you know, mild flux of amino acids. So it's this constant yin and yang. And what we want to get away from is extremes of one or the other. You wouldn't want autophagy to be totally upregulated all the time, nor would you want mTOR C1 to be upregulated all the time. You want some sort of balance. In obesity and fat cells, autophagy is dramatically upregulated in a pathological context because there's a lot of cellular damage associated with the hypoxia of obesity because all these you know, emerging fat cells, there's a dearth of oxygen, and so autophagy is upregulated. In certain cancers, autophagy is upregulated. So mTOR is neither good nor bad. I just want you to understand that. And again, the, the, the main finding of this study that I took away was mTOR C1 activation needs both growth factors, insulin growth factor one, and excessive nutrients to be stimulated to activate the mTOR complex, which will drive proliferative pathways, pro-growth pathways. So having steak is not necessarily going to chronically overexpress that pathway. You can have vegan food, you can have junk food, you can raise your glucose and raise your insulin from non-animal sources and drive mTOR processes and pro-growth processes. So it's not like plant-based foods always get a free ride and animal-based foods are gonna be deleterious. There's a little bit more context that needs to go on because there's many vegan foods that can raise insulin and glucose together, which would drive mTOR, okay? And we need to keep that in mind. So um, if you wanna learn more about this, I have a full course, the Autophagy Enhancer Masterclass. It really dives deep into the details about the nutrient sensing receptors and various pathways that are affecting mTOR and autophagy on a deeper level, including foods, meal plans, and exercise and fasting plans. I'll put a link below there. But if you wanna see more videos like this, just hit that like button. Let me know by commenting below and we'll do more on that. And I'll put a link to David Sapatini's paper below as well. So appreciate you as always for tuning in. We'll catch you in a future episode down the road.